So now that we've covered the fundamentals of OAuth, some code samples, and some details about how all of OneLogin's APIs function, let's dive in a little bit and talk about how specifically to use one of our event's APIs. So in this case, we'll be explaining the three different ways of querying for OneLogin events. We'll learn about some of the basics of the event API. We'll try and understand how to construct a query, how pagination works to bring back large result sets, how to limit the values returned when you query for events, uh, and we'll be going over some sections that's showing how the code refreshes tokens along with some sample code. Now the events API basically has two endpoints. They're both get endpoints, one that either gets all events from one login or one that allows you to get a specific event by its ID. And all of these return event resources. And event resources are simply the details that are provided in each event. And an event ID is an arbitrary identifier that's been assigned to a particular event that has happened. So what's required to call the events API? In all cases, you have to set an author authorization header. This will always be set to bearer access token. And of course, the access token is the token you generated using the generate token API. You'll find that all of our endpoints require one of these access tokens. Next up is the base URL. And this will always be HTTP API USREU .com slash API slash one slash events. Now you have to invoke all of these endpoints over HTTPS. We simply do not allow these calls to be made over an unsecured HTTP line. And making this call will return in the body of the HTTP response a JSON array of all the fields from all events, along with a status code, pagination information, and a JSON array of all the fields. So let's go through an example of this. First and foremost, you will always get the status codes returned in a JSON status object. Next up, you'll get pagination information, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute. And then finally, the actual data, and in this case, will be a JSON array of all fields from all events. And you'll note at the top of each of these events is an ID, and we'll get into some details on that in a bit. So what do status codes look like? Well, if the credentials were accepted, a successful call is made. In this case, it returns a 200 code with the error set to false. Now, if you have bad or expired credentials, you'll get a 401, type unauthorized authentication failure. This is usually a sign that it's time to go grab a new access token. Missing misformatted headers. This means more or less that something in the header information that you set up was formatted incorrectly. Perhaps you haven't set up the bearer token properly, or there were some missing details. Now, obviously, you don't want to get every single event from one login back until the end of time. Or if you do, that's a sort of one-time thing. So most often, you'll be wanting to construct some type of query just to get specific event information from one login. For example, if you want to return events whose event type ID value equals 13, and by the way, a list of all event types, uh, their IDs, and a brief descriptions is available on our developer site. So in this case, we want to return all events whose event type ID equals 13. So all events of a specific type. In this case, the query consists of question mark, event type ID equals 13. Now, maybe you want to sort the events by certain properties. In this case, we're sorting <coughs> In this case, we're sorting the events by their ID. Use plus to sort in ascending order or minus to sort in descending order. So in this example, we're saying return all of the events sorted by their IDs in ascending order. Now, as we get into some details about how many uh, things are returned on any given event, there are a lot of fields returned, and maybe you're only interested in a few of these. In this case, you can say, I only want to return the selected fields for every event. So in this case, the fields are set to created at, event type ID, and user ID. So in this case, for example, you're really only interested in when the event occurred, 
what type of event, and what user was associated with a particular event. And finally, you can combine all of these together, saying, I only want to see event type ID 13, sorted by the IDs in ascending order, and really the only details I want are when was it created, the event type ID, and the user ID associated with that event. Now one of the items that was returned from these calls was the pagination field. And when returning large amounts of data, it's not desirable to get the data all at once. If you think about it, you may be querying for up to 10,000 events. And if that was returned in a single HTTP response, that might time out before you actually manage to pull all of the data uh, that you requested. So when retrieving large amounts of data, uh, it's not desirable to get the data all at once. It's really all about using this to page through a certain number of events at a time. So when you first make one of these calls, it'll return this pagination uh, data to you. It'll return this pagination data to you as part of the call. The most important part of this is the next link. This next link represents a URL that if you call will return the next 20 results to you. So basically making a request to this URL along with the proper authentication error headers which includes the bearer token will return you the next block of events for the query you initially constructed. And when no more events are available for the query you made this next link will simply contain null. So now we're going to jump back into Postman to show you some concrete examples of how to do this. So here you can see the library that we imported into Postman. All of these calls are available on the developers.onelogin.com site for you to load into your instance of Postman. So here we can go to the get events method that I've imported into my Postman. Here you see it's fairly straightforward, API, usreu.com, onelogin.com, API1 slash events. And I've already set up this environment and filled in the details about these calls into my environment. This is a currently active access token and a currently active refresh token, all filled in ahead of time. So now that I've done that, I'll take a look at my headers, and lo and behold, you see the authorization is set to bearer access token, so I'm good to go. And at this point, this returns, well, all events from the very beginning of time from my one login instance. If we look at some of the dates here, these date back to 2015. As you might imagine, there are quite a few events in this system. As I scroll through these, you'll see that eventually it's returned probably about 50 events. So what if I do, in fact, want to retrieve more events? One of the things you'll note here is in the pagination part of the response, there is a next link. And if I were to take this next link and just copy it like so, and paste it in here, lo and behold, this now returns another page worth of data. And you'll also note there's a, now a previous link here as well. Most of the time you'll probably be going through and just paging through one page after another. But this does allow you to essentially page forward and backwards through the events that you requested. Now next up, let's focus on returning a single event ID. If I go back to the events that were returned from the previous thing, I can say pick an event at random and pluck its ID out of the response. If I now include that ID as part of this request, I'm now returning just this one event. Another thing I can do 
is when I look at these events, I notice that a lot of details are being returned. So one of the things I could do is say, I'm really only interested in certain fields that are being returned. In this case, user ID, event type ID, and the date. This is one way to cut down on the amount of data you actually have to transfer across the wire. If you only pull in the fields that you're interested in, then you're transmitting that much less information. So now that we've seen the API in action in Postman, let's go take a look at some actual sample code. So here we are with some sample code for retrieving events, once again written in PHP. This is also available on GitHub Gist. So first and foremost, we have the URL that we want to talk to, in this case, api.us.onelogin.com, api slash one slash events. The other piece of information we'll need is an access token. This is generated elsewhere, and this sample code relies on the previous sample code we saw for generating access tokens. First up, Here's a whole bunch of information that can be packaged into Array for setting up various query parameters. For example, since, until, how much information you want to return, certain fields, etc. First, it constructs the query out of the Array of various things. Next, it sets the uh, authorization header to be a bearer access token just as all of our other APIs require. Finally, it constructs the curl query. This is a get type operation. And as always, there's the authorization header. Once the options are set, it simply ex executes the query. As always, we look for, was an error message returned as part of the request? It also makes sure that, in fact, some data was returned. It is possible to construct a query against our events API that doesn't return any data. In this case, it would not return an error message. It would say that the call succeeded with a 200. But when it came to looking at the actual data, there might be none. So here we make sure that the, the array that's returned isn't empty. And if it isn't empty, it then takes this information pulls the data into data, and then sets up the before cursor and the after cursor. And it's as simple as that. From here, you can simply use PHP code to parse through the data that was returned. Here we see very similar code, except in this case, rather than querying for various events, in this case, it's really only interested in pulling the details from one particular event. So in this case, we set up what the event ID is that we want to return. There's a little bit of error checking to make sure the ID parameter isn't empty. It adds slash and then the ID that was passed in. Once again, we make the request. We, as always, look for an error message. And in this case, this does not return an array. This simply returns a single event. So in this case, we simply parse the JSON data for one event object and then print it out. And it's as simple as that. So next up, we'll go in and talk a little bit about the user's API. 